Hi, I'm Joseph South. I'm ISTE's Chief Learning Officer, and I'm here at CES, a gigantic consumer electronics show, to see what's happening next in technology that will impact schools, teachers, and students in the coming months and years. One thing that really struck me was the blending between our physical and our electronic worlds, how these two can be melded together to create an entirely integrated experience. These building blocks, for example, have electronics built into them that are connected by Wi-Fi to this controller. That allows students to create environments that have both a physical presence as well as electronic capabilities. This touchscreen bulletin board is designed to replace static bulletin boards in classrooms or teachers' lounges to provide a more dynamic, interactive, and collaborative experience where everyone can contribute to what's on there and it can be updated in real time. I was really impressed by this offering from Matata Lab that allows pre-literate children to learn computational thinking competencies like deconstruction or algorithm design. They learn these concepts by helping this robot navigate this maze. They do this by constructing an algorithm using symbols on these tiles, which gets transmitted to the robot, who then follows their instructions. What's really neat about this is it helps them see that the same algorithmic logic can be applied to music and also to the construction of geometric shapes. I love how it takes these core computational thinking competencies and applies them to three different domains. And it's a really nice blending of the concrete and the physical with the abstract and conceptual. There were also some really interesting examples of assistive technology. For example, these glasses are designed to help those struggling with dyslexia to read text on a page. I was also really blown away by this technology that allows a person with an amputated limb to control this robotic hand. Sensors on their skin pick up electrical signals of the muscles that would normally be controlling their hand and translate those into signals that the robotic hand can understand. In this way, they're literally controlling the robotic hand with their mind. The same company, called Brain Robotics, also has a kit for schools that allows students to build a robotic hand. There was a huge focus on wearables designed to help us increase our sense of personal well-being. For example, this wearable, which has been calibrated to our personal biometric data, helps us make food choices. I'm not sure why the chocolate is green, but I like it. And this fun AI assistant doesn't only help young learners learn new languages, but also tracks their emotional state and then calibrates their lessons accordingly. There was also a greater emphasis on bringing AI fully into our physical environment. It was amazing to think about the advanced mastery that this ping pong player could develop just by playing against this AI-empowered robot, not to mention the exercise that he's getting too. Thinking through the implications of these technologies for our classrooms was really fun, but I have to admit, it also made me want to spend a little bit of time in this nap pod. Thanks for going on this journey with me. If you have any thoughts or comments, please share them back. Until next time.